there are those who will claim that as a, a believing Christian, one who has been saved by faith in Jesus Christ, can lose your salvation if you stumble, and it's by some subjective standard that no one really knows or can define. And, and I want to illustrate the folly, the error, the complete lie of that, in that before you were saved, God was so faithful that while you were rejecting Him, ignoring Him, denying Him, He was so faithful that He was there waiting the instant that you turned towards Him, the instant you decided you would trust in your God and Creator, Jesus Christ. He was there to save you. So this belief that says you can now lose it is saying that He's more faithful to the one that doesn't even care, doesn't even want to find out until they finally believe. And then he, I guess he has a, a loose hold on them. Whereas his word says, no one can snatch you out of my hand. And he will not leave us nor forsake us. Or there's the parable of the 99 and the one. He leaves the 99 to go after the one. But that's not what many traditions teach. Unfortunately, I call them religion, and it's the most common thing. Traditions of men result in religion that tries to beat you over the head with fear and condemnation. But we know that God does not use fear. He is a God of love, and, and it's not about Him threatening you and tormenting you, which is what fear is. If you are feeling fear, it's from the enemy, or it's from a tool of the enemy. So don't believe in the liars. Believe in your God. You just need to get closer to Him. Because if you believe all those other religious things that says, well, if you really believe you're saved and you can't lose it, you'll just go crazy and sin like a wild person. Well, then you don't know what His love is. You might not be saved. Because if you really knew His love, that's not the reaction you would have. Believe me. And there's no analogy for that. I could give some life-saving analogy. But people get their lives saved all the time from whatever, drowning drugs, and then they go straight back to dangerous swimming or, or shooting drugs. It happens. I've seen it right in front of my face. So it's, it's an eternal salvation. So that's the thing you need to ask yourself. Do I really believe? Am I really saved? And Paul mentions this, you know, by looking to see if you are of the faith. But once you're of the faith, you are of the faith. And it doesn't mean your struggles stop. It's okay to struggle. He will not let go of you. He's not more faithful to the people who don't even believe than he is to those who do believe. He is a good God, he's a kind God, he's a patient God, and his patience does not end after you have turned towards him. He knows, he understands, he struggled like you, for we have not an high priest who cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was at all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. He did it without sin for us, so we don't have to, okay? Believe in that, trust in that, and when you're weak, you're weak. But his strength is made perfect in weakness. He knows you don't want to sin. And again, if you want to sin, then check out your faith. But for, for the most part, when you are saved, you don't want to sin. There's moments we have maybe in anger or whatever, but you don't want to sin. And I just always want to point out, get closer to him. That's the answer. It's not... Fear, it's not condemnation, it's not religion, it's not obey these sacraments and rules, is get closer to Him, see Him more clearly. You know, now we see through a glass darkly or dimly, but then we shall see Him face to face. But you can be transformed from glory to glory by looking more clearly at Him. That's what changes you, it's seeing Him, it's not trying to be Him. In Jesus' name, Amen.